Hello everyone and uh, now let us discuss the CBT question. Question number one. All of the following structure pass through the esophageal hiatus except. Now we know that basically in the diaphragm we have three openings. IVC opening, esophageal opening and the aortic opening. Through the IVC opening we all know IVC and the right phrenic nerve will pass but through the esophageal opening the esophagus and the uh, vagus will pass along with the vagus and esophagus there is also the branch of the left gastric artery and from the iot uh, iotic opening the iota will pass and the thoracic duct will pass along with that azygous vein will pass okay so let us basically uh, go back to the question and see answer to this question will be thoracic duct because thoracic duct passes through iotic opening not through the esophageal hiatus next question is the normal position of the uterus answer is straightforward anti flexed and anti-verted what what is this angle let me explain suppose this is the axis of vagina this is the axis of cervix and this is the axis of the body of the uterus then we can say this is the uh, basically this is the axis of the body this is the axis of the cervix and here you can say the axis of the vagina so there are two angles one between the cervix and vagina other between the cervix and the body okay this is vagina cervix and the body of the uterus so this angle is the angle of anti-version this is anti-version okay and if you are confused uh, which one is what you remember v for vagina v for version because vagina is only making one angle cervix is making two angles okay this angle is will be called as this will be anti flexion this will be anti flexion so the normal situation for the uterus is to be anti flexed and anti verted next question the patient is having uh, complaints of dryness of the mouth submandibular gland uh, is lacking the saliva secretion answer is coda tympani nerve why because it has got two roles one it will deliver the salivary fibers to submandibular gland as well as sublingual gland second second is it will carry okay it will carry the taste sensation it will carry the taste sensation from anterior to third of tongue from anterior to third of tongue next question is regarding the anterior belly of the digastric it is the derivative of first branchial arch and the posterior belly of digastric that will be coming from second arch the preferred term is pharyngeal arch okay but sometimes they use branchial arch although branchial arch is an old term okay so next question is uh, <coughs> uh, adrenal medulla is the derivative of neural crest cells and in this uh, sequence we must also know the other derivatives of the neural crest cells which we can remember by this mnemonic MO passes and these are the derivatives that we have to know melanocytes, meninges, rhindoblast, PNS ganglia, all sort of ganglia whatever may be the ganglia right it may be dorsal root, it may be cranial, parasympathetic whatever and all, along with that we have the C cells, adrenal medulla, Schwann cells, spiral septum, endocrine uh, cardiac cushions, skull bones all these are the derivatives of neural crest cells okay and uh, going on to the next question which of the following is the true statement regarding the spermatogenesis straightforward question answer will be 74 days because if they ask the time required for the capacitation that will be seven hours but for the spermatogenesis that will be 74 days okay and rest of the statements are false epithelial lining of the esophagus is stratified squamous non-keratinized you need to understand our oral cavity it is exposed to the external environment correct just like any other opening of the body that which are exposed to the external environment there is chances of wear and tear is high to prevent the wear and tear what is provided is the stratified squamous uh, epithelium is provided and the esophagus is in continuity with the uh, oral cavity it will be also lined by the stratified squamous non-keratinized tissue next question is blood test is buried is formed by that is formed by the sertoli cells in fact Sertoli cells they play lot of roles right they will pro also provide the mullerian inhibiting substance very very important along with the other important function so Sertoli cells will make the barrier also which we have to remember again the question number nine is a factual question answer will be tympanic membrane because tympanic membrane has got outer layer middle layer and inner layer 
outer layer develops from ectoderm middle layer from the mesoderm inner layer from the endoderm that is very kind of a peculiar question which is asked very frequently in our exam so we need to be careful and we need to remember particularly this along with that the arches pharyngeal arches derivatives are very very important one we have already seen in this set right one question we have seen right ajigus vein the next question says it drains into what let me just uh, you see we can revise this particular part ajigus vein here ajigus vein is seen on the right side because the name is ajigus it is without any partner on the left side it will be draining into svc superior vena cava straight forward answer and if you see the first posterior intercostal vein on both sides that will drain into uh, brachiocephalic the difference lies in the superior intercostal vein on the right side and left side there is formation of superior intercostal by the merger of second third and fourth vein but the right side will drain into ajigus left side will drain into uh, again the brachiocephalic okay so and this particular diagram we need to remember i told you very easy way in the left side we have three areas of drainage brachiocephalic accessory hemi ajigus and hemi ajigus and total 12 wins divided by 3 so 4 for each 1 to 4 5 to 8 and the remaining right so that's how we can easily remember what is uh, what is uh, you see uh, the drainage of this whole area so answer to this question will be superior vena cava next question superior epigastric artery is a branch of it's a factual question internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery will give two branches it will give this internal thoracic artery will give superior epigastric and the other branch is musculophrenic artery okay and along with that these are the terminal branches before that it will be internal thoracic artery will be giving two branches in each intercostal space named anterior intercostal arteries okay next question is epiploic foramen is bounded by all except let us see this in this diagram we can see this is the epiploic foramen and who lies anteriorly is the right free margin of the lesser omentum not the greater omentum and in the right free margin of the lesser omentum we have the portal triad structure present what lies below is the first part of the duodenum what lies above is the caudate lobe of liver what lies behind is the ivc right suprarenal gland and the t12 vertebra these boundaries are important for us we have discussed in the class and this is asked in your exam so that is why it is very very important and the question says what is the answer here free edge of greater omentum will be the answer okay now sphenoid warmer joint is what type of joint it is shindelasis joint and let me show you this diagram let me show you this diagram it is a suture all the skull bones are having the uh, fibrous joint that is suture we can't move the joints and shindelasis is also one type of suture only but it is a special suture it is a specific name given to this joint where we have the vomer and inside we have the rostrum of the sphenoid and this is a type of suture but special name is nothing but shindelasis okay that is the meaning next question is example of traction epiphysis now traction means the jutting out part so that answer will be trochanters trochanters tubercles tuberosity those type of structures are traction of epiphysis and regarding a, a head of the femur that is pressure epiphysis why because it bears the weight of the body by making the joint right so it bears the pressure right but what about these joints the ostrigonum and coracoid process they both they are the type of atavistic they are atavistic type okay like this and the next question is again a factual question it says brachialis is supplied by what now we know brachialis being a part of anterior of the arm and anterior of the arm the nerve supply is musculocutaneous but brachialis is a hybrid muscle it will be supplied by musculocutaneous along with that radial nerve so answer will be c here right next question is if the greater tuberosity uh, is lost okay it should be greater tubercle although which of the following moment will be affected now if if i show you this diagram we can see uh, in this part that uh, basically we have uh, this is the subscapularis is in front of the scapula it is attached to the lesser tubercle but if you see three muscles are attached onto the greater tubercle supraspinatus infraspinatus and teres minor what is their role infraspinatus and teres minor are the lateral rotator they do the lateral rotation and supraspinatus does the abduction that is why in case in case uh, if it is lost right in case if greater tuberosity is lost then lateral rotation and abduction will be lost answer will be p thank you so much everyone
Take care. All the best.